So Ryan, uh, this is, I would say, your first true main event. You've had some main events in the past, but this is your first true one in a big scaled event like this at the Honda Center. Uh, talk to me about the emotions that are going through your, your head right now, because this is what you've been wanting for such a long time. Yeah, it's starting to hit me, you know, before the uh, fight, I didn't really feel the magnitude to it, but now I do. Uh, it's exciting, you know, but I gotta just keep on, I keep on reminding myself, it's just boxing. When I get in there, just get comfy, start doing your job, and everything will be okay. Uh -huh. Any kind of added pressure on a fight like this, considering the platform, it's Valentine's Day, you're kind of like the heartthrob yeah. out in boxing right now, it's kind of a, it's kind of tailor-made for you to really own the night. Yeah, it is. Uh, I don't really want to look too much into it, like, feel the pressure or anything. I'm just, like, keep, like I said, I keep reminding myself, just boxing, just go in there, just to, like any other day, and perform your best. And when I perform my best, I give out great performances. So, uh, I'm just going to do what I do. Uh -huh. I mean, throughout all this, a lot of people forget that you're still only 21 years old. What's the... What's the hardest part been like to kind of grow up in front of the public eye and in the social media age? Uh, the hardest part is just hearing people saying that I'm not going to amount to shit, that I'm going to be a bust, that, you know, he doesn't have the heart, he doesn't have the chin. I don't know where the fuck people are getting chin from. I've never been dropped. But, uh, yeah, they just keep on saying all those things, and I'm like, I have to be patient because I know I, have, I still have to grow. I still have to get stronger. I still have to get better. So it's like... Look, I have to do it, so so it's just annoying to wait. But now my time is here. A lot of a lot of your critics had the same things to say about Oscar De La Hoya, who came up the same way too. You know, he had the good looks, he had the the pedigree with the Olympics as well too. A lot of people doubted him early on in his career. What kind of advice has Oscar been giving you throughout this process, as far as what to make of yourself too? You know. Oscar kind of lets me figure it out myself. He's not really a person to tell me, like, you got to do this, you got to do that. He pretty much, you know, he's not very hands-on when it comes to that. But the things he has told me is, like, don't listen to nobody, you know, they're just talking and stuff like that. But uh, at the end of the day, I think the key for myself is to block it out. Like, I took my Instagram app off my phone. So I don't really have it right now. I'm just focused because people say a lot of shit. I don't want to read into it. I just stay focused on the fight. Uh huh. How, how would you describe your relationship with Oscar these days? I know the whole Twitter world and Instagram world. They saw the back and forth you guys had. How would you describe your relationship now? Well, as you can see, we're we're happier than happy. You know, we we just have the same vision. We like we just want the same goal. So you know, Oscar, you know. Getting to know him even more, doing the press with him, you know, he's a great guy, he's funny, you know, and, you know, we have a good connection there. And I think he sees himself in me a little bit, and I think that's why, you know, he goes hard for me now. He's like, all right, I'm behind you 100%. And after everything I cleared up, it's been nothing but, you know, rainbows and sunshine. You mentioned yesterday you've matured a lot. Do you wish you handled that situation a little differently uh, when you were unhappy last time? If you're unhappy again, would you handle things a little differently? You know, I, I think everything in life is meant to be. So I think that situation was meant to be. It brought me and Oscar and Golden Boy closer. It made us understand each other more. So what if, if everything was so smooth in life, then nothing would be hard. Like, things are hard. So, you know, it's just... It's part of the process. I'm enjoying every aspect of it, and I felt like shit, it made us all stronger as a family, and I think we're gonna go even stronger now. You guys have been very close throughout this uh, promotional tour. Yeah. Have you been kind of ribbing each other back and forth? Are you trash talking to like, I'm gonna have a better career than you and stuff like that? Or, uh, how do not, you... <laughs> not really, like, it's kind of like, just a friend type of thing, like family, like we just make jokes and, and stuff like that. We're not really, uh, we're not really talking about fights. We're just making jokes and stuff. Uh huh. Now this is a very significant stage from the sense of Canelo Alvarez won his first world title in this arena. He's your training partner. He's your friend. You share the mutual trainer. Talk to me about what that relationship has meant to you over the last year and a half as you've kind of transitioned into the Reynosos and other Canelo's tutelage as well. Yeah, I mean, our relationship is growing. As you can see, you know, we support each other a lot on social media. Uh, we always back each other up, and we've just been growing as a family. Like, when you train with somebody so much and you see them a lot every day, 
see his daughter, his, his fiance. It's kind of like you just get close to to the person. So, you no, know, we have a close relationship with Eddie and everybody. So it's all good. Do you consider yourself a main event fighter from here on out? Ah, like main event or uh, fighting under the undercard of Canelo. Uh huh. Uh, the next steps for you are kind of mapped out. Oscar said it the other day. He wants a Gervonta Davis fight or a Jorge Linares fight. Who do you want to fight? I want to fight Gervonta Davis, but if I have to fight other fighters to get there, I will, you know, but I'm only going to fight top fighters now. Uh, it's, it's sink or swim in 2020 for me. You know, either I, I'm about it or I'm not. Like, I want to see now. Like, I'm 21 years old. I'm ready to do the thing. Like, I'm ready to test my skills with the best fighters now. Uh, anybody at 135, I really have no fear, you know. Uh, they're my size, they're my weight, uh, you're not going to be faster than me. All you have to do is rely on is either your power or, or I don't know, your brute strength, but I don't think that will beat me. Uh, is Canelo going to be watching the fight uh, Friday in person? Uh, I don't know about that, but I know he'll, he'll definitely be watching. Uh, I don't know his schedule. I asked him, he said, I, I got to check my schedule. He went to my other fights, but uh, uh -huh. I don't know about this. He might surprise me. Though. Uh -huh. Uh, what's one thing that Eddie Reynoso and Chapo have really taught you from a training perspective that you're kind of carrying on and you kind of see yourself as a from from a Canelo standpoint from that regard? You know, they understand the things I needed to work on, so they just showed me a lot of defensive moves, uh, little moves, but they went a long way. So I feel like you know the things I've learned with them have been very helpful, and uh, you're gonna see come Friday night if he brings out those. In me, you're gonna see. Uh, it's hard to hit. Me. It's actually hard to hit. Me. You know, a lot of my fights you watch, I end them quick, but it it is hard to hit. Me. And lastly, it's Valentine's Day. A lot of people have plans with significant others. They're gonna be spending some ridiculous money on dates. Why should they come specifically and spend Valentine's Day with you? I mean, shoot, it's different. It's different than any other date you'll put her on. <laughs> you know, take her to a boxing fight. It's gonna be like, oh, she like, it's exciting. Girls often find it exciting. You know, they're like, oh, she had a fight. Like, they want to watch it, and then after that, they want to cuddle and go to sleep. So that's what you're gonna do. Take her to the fight and take her back home. Are you promising a St. Valentine's Day massacre with Francisco? Yes, sir. There will, there will be blood. <laughs> <laughs> that's right.